What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to use the extension MS Physics to simulate rainwater runoff on a site. Um, so before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. So the SketchUp Essentials course is a course that I put together to uh, help people become proficient in SketchUp. So uh, it's something where I wanted to get some more in-depth training out there. It's basically the equivalent if you were to do a two-day in-person course, only instead of only having that information while you're there in person, you have lifetime access and you can still uh, ask questions, get help, that sort of thing. So if you're interested in some more uh, in-depth SketchUp training, pre-orders for this course are now 40% off through Wednesday of this week. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to go check it out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So a couple weeks ago, I created a video about MS Physics, um, introducing you to that extension. That's basically an extension designed to simulate physics in SketchUp, so it turns SketchUp into an actual physics simulator. And uh, I got a bunch of really good responses. I think people really like that extension, but the overwhelming question I got was, great, now what do I do with it? And uh, there were a few suggestions out there, some of which were very technical and in-depth, some of them a little bit less so, but um, one of the suggestions that I got was you could probably use it to simulate rainwater runoff on site. And I, and, uh, I kind of thought that was a good idea. I wanted to give it a try, kind of see how it worked, and uh, see what we could come up with. So I'm going to try two different examples. I'm going to use the retaining wall example that we talked about before. So this was my example for creating retaining walls on your site, which uh, I'll link to down below. And then the other one, we're going to look at runoff over a much larger site. And so in this one, what we've done is we've already got our site created. And if you remember, I just created a grid using the sandbox tools. And then I just used the smooth tool in order to uh, push that stuff up and down in order to kind of adjust the way that the site worked. But now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to... We're going to add basically a whole bunch of spheres to kind of simulate rainwater. And so the first thing we need to do before we do that is we need to take these two objects and we need to adjust their attributes in MS Physics. And so you need to have MS Physics installed and running. But basically what we want to do is we want to select these two objects. We want to right click on them and we want to go down to MS Physics and you want to set their shape to a static mesh. And so when you set these to a static mesh, you're basically telling MS Physics that these are fixed. So um, they're not going anywhere, anything like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create our spheres. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create um, a face up above that I can put those along. So that really helps you uh, kind of space them and uh, get them so that they're going to drop right along your uh, right along your mesh down here. And so all I did is I just drew a line straight up and down on the blue axis and then I just used inferencing to draw lines to all these corners. Now I can use this to set these spheres um, in MS Physics. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a sphere. And so I'm just going to draw a circle right here. And then I'm going to draw another circle. And what I did is I activated the circle tool and I tapped the left arrow key to lock to that green axis. And I'm just going to make this another circle. And then all I'm going to do, you can see how this is a circle inside of a circle basically, is I'm going to select this interior circle. I'm going to use the follow me tool to extrude this so that it becomes a sphere. And then I'm just going to, you know, and before I do that, what I should have done is make sure to come in here and make this a group so that nothing merges in here. So make sure you do that before you do this. So we'll go ahead and make this a sphere. And then I'm going to reverse the faces on this. And I'm just going to triple click so that you select your whole sphere. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to click make component. And we're just going to call that sphere. And so once you've created your sphere, what you're going to do is first of all, I'm going to adjust the size because I want this to be a lot smaller. So I'm going to use uniform scale. So I'm just going to activate, I'm going to select this. I'm going to activate the scale tool by tapping the S key. And then I'm going to hold control to scale this about center. And since I'm using a, basically a corner grip, this is uniformly scaling this, and when I hold the control key, it scales at about center. I'm going to erase out this extra little circle here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use inferencing to place this on my corner. So I'm going to start off, and I'm going to move this 
So I'm gonna use the center of this circle and move this along the red axis so that I'm along the line. And then I'll find the center point over here and I'll just do the same thing on the green axis. And this is probably close enough. Maybe what I'll do is I'll move this so it's a little bit inside of this. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a bunch of different copies. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this backside I'm gonna activate the move tool with the M key, select this backside and click on it, and then I'm gonna tap the control key to enter copy mode. And I'm just gonna move my mouse until I've kind of inferenced along this green axis um, to this backside. And now this tool is still active, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in divided by, and I'm gonna hit the number 20, and I'm gonna hit the enter key. What that's gonna do is that's gonna create 20 copies of this sphere between, um, my base point and the second point that I set. So you can see how creating those copies gets really easy. Then we're just gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna drag a box around these, use the move tool in copy mode. And we'll create a copy over here and we're gonna type in divided by 20 over here as well. So what we have is a whole bunch of different spheres in here and I could do more of these if I wanted to. I could do 25 or 30. Just remember that the more of these that you add in here, um, the more this is going to have to calculate. And one thing that I probably should have done before I did that, but we can go ahead and do it now. I'm gonna hide this uh, face because I don't need it anymore, is I'm just gonna select all of these I'm gonna right click on them. I'm gonna go to MS Physics, and I'm gonna set the shape of these to spheres. So all that's gonna do is that's gonna adjust the way that MS Physics calculates the way these are gonna move around. And so I'm gonna go ahead and move these a little bit lower as well because I don't really want them to bounce off of here, though some of that will definitely happen. But I'm just gonna move these so they're about right here. So you can see how all of these spheres are right above my mesh. And so now what I can do is I can just run this. And one thing I would re recommend is saving this before you do it, um, just in case something goes wrong or sometimes when MS Physics runs, um, it doesn't remember where all of your spheres were. So saving a copy of this before you do this is probably a good idea. And so now that you've done this, all you need to do is you just need to get in a place where you can watch what this is gonna do and just click the play button. And when you click the play button, what this is gonna do is this is gonna drop all of these um, using basically the physics. So it drops all of these on the face and you can see how as soon as they drop, you can see where they're gonna roll. So you can see where the water is gonna go on this particular site. So you can see, for example, that right now you've got this area where this is pooling. Um, so you're gonna get water pooling right here, here, and here. And so you can use this to kind of get an idea of what you wanna do with your topography. So like, for example, in this case, what I could do is I could We'll go ahead and hide these spheres for a minute. What I could do is I could come in here with the Smooth tool and actually adjust some of this topography. So I could kind of knock this down a little bit and I could create kind of a runoff, almost like a runoff channel over here um, to see what that would do with my actual runoff. So now I can go back and I can do an edit, unhide last. And now we can run this again and see if that changes anything with where our water goes. So theoretically, if I did this right, which I may or may not have, then these are gonna kinda roll more in this direction. And one problem that you run into here is these are kinda running into each other and keeping each other from flowing or moving. Probably if you wanted to, what you could do, so let's see what happens if we just delete it out. So if I just select this and delete the geometry out completely, maybe that'll let our stuff kind of fall through. There we go. So now the runoff will fall through because you know this is all gonna kind of gather over here. So now you can use this to get an idea of where that water is gonna go without all this stuff backing up, um, blocking the way that this is gonna work. And so you could use this to basically kind of set up the way that your drainage works on a site to get kind of a conceptual idea of the way the drainage on this site would work. All right, so now let's do this with a bigger site. So this is a site that I've brought in using the location data um, from the location toolbar. And uh, one thing to know is you're only gonna be able to access the terrain data if you have the pro version of SketchUp. Um, 
so but what we've done is we've just brought this in by using the add more imagery function we kind of picked the site that we wanted to use so in this case I picked a site that's kind of um, it's got some office buildings around it but there's also a big open space and I just use select region and I just brought that in and then I click the button for toggle terrain and so we're gonna do the same general kind of thing where we're just gonna draw a line up and then across and for some reason this gets really funky um, on this um, the inferencing gets really funky with this piece of location data I'm not really sure why you can see how this isn't taking my green line and uh, making it level with my point right here so I'm just going to kind of take a guess as to where the corners of my site would be because the inferencing is kind of weird and then we'll just draw our box right across there so we'll just do the same thing where we'll group this and we'll use this as kind of a test plane for our runoff so we'll come in here and we'll use the follow me tool to create our sphere and then we'll give this a property of sphere and then we'll make sure to come in here and we'll make our location data to be a static mesh and then we'll just use the move tool in copy mode to create our copies and I'm gonna go ahead and put a bunch of these in here just to kinda of see what it does it'll probably run kinda of slow if I do that but it's kinda of fun to just kinda of fill that in a whole bunch we'll do the same thing divided by 15 we'll do divided by 30 we'll go ahead and hide this we'll select all of these and one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move these down a little bit because I don't want them to bounce all over the place when they hit the ground because they will do that and then we're just gonna hit the play button and so what that's gonna do is that's gonna drop these spheres across this entire site and you can see how I probably should have deleted these out you can see how this runs a lot slower if you have this many spheres in here but it gives you a really good idea of kind of the way that everything's going to flow. So you can see how most everything on this site slopes to this direction and then down to this uh, pond down here in the corner. And so maybe what we'll do is we'll just reset this and we'll go ahead and get rid of a bunch of these because it's running so slow. But also because I feel like when they're this closely spaced, it's not necessarily giving me the result that I want it to give me. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use inferencing up here to just set these spheres. We'll, let's just do divided by 10 and see if less spheres gives us an easy to understand result. We'll go ahead and hide this and we'll go ahead and hit play. So I'd say this was pretty effective at simulating the way that runoff would work on a site. So if you have any other ideas for how to use MS Physics, let me know. I'd love to hear about them. Uh, maybe try out some more cool stuff. So that's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you enjoy this video? Can you think of some more uses for MS Physics? I just love having that sketch out conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new sketch up content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every Every little bit helps even if it's only a dollar a month so make sure to check out that link in the notes down below but in any case thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys